A while back I received this huge parcel which contained the little monster TiVo Delta 3D printer. Now I usually like to stick to rather low priced 3D printers like the Delta 3D printer that I used for almost all my project enclosures so far. So why would I take liking to such an $800 machine, you might ask? Well, not only its large print volume of 34 by 50 cm, which enables me to print rather big project enclosures, makes it interesting, but also the fact that it features a kind of direct extruder, which enables me to print with flexible filaments. This is special since Delta 3D printers usually feature a Bowden extruder, that is not close enough to the hot end to apply sufficient pressure to the flexible filament without clocking the whole system. So the question is whether this little monster is worth the $800 price tag. Let's find out. After opening the parcel and removing the first layer of foam, I was greeted by a bag of documents, that not only contained the packaging checklist, but more importantly a proper instruction manual, with well-made illustrations that ease the mechanical and electrical build a lot. The overall packaging for the components was also well-made, and protected almost all the parts from mechanical shocks during shipping except for one acrylic glass piece that apparently broke off the power supply unit. Now after I gathered all the components from the parcel and nicely arranged them on my workbench, it was time for the assembly. Since the small bags, which were filled with complementary components, were all labeled and assigned to a specific section of the manual, building the 3D printer was super easy and only took around 3-4 to four hours. So here is a quick summary of all the steps. First off, I mounted the feet, followed by the three aluminum profiles. Then I inserted the three sliders, secured the top plate to the other side of the aluminum profiles, attached the three stepper motors to the top plate, assembled three adjustable tensioners for the belts, mounted them to the three axes, attached the print bed to the bottom plate of the printer, connected the sliders to the hot end through plastic rods, attached the extruder motor to the hot end through a piece of PTFE tube, and secured the motor in midair by utilizing additional belts, the three sliders and zip ties. Last but not least, I attached the main control PCB, which is an open source movie board, as well as the power supply to the top plate, and connected all the electrical components to one another, according to the manual. And with that being done, it was time for the first power up. After a short boot sequence, we can use the pretty responsive touchscreen to preheat, move, extrude, control the fans, print, and much more. But what we should start with is the calibration, which firstly heats up the print bed up to 80 degrees Celsius and then performs an auto bed leveling by utilizing the included BL Touch module. That means when we start a new print, the printer will know where the high and low points of the bed are located, and thus compensates them and will always create an almost perfect first layer. At least once you fine tune the distance between the BL Touch module and bed and the G code of your slicer software. But before we can print anything, we must install the Repetir Host software, enter the printer settings, which are listed in the manual, and import the slicer settings from the SD cards, which were provided by the manufacturer. Afterwards, it was just a task of importing an STL file, slicing it, saving it to the SD card inserting it into the printer and selecting the file via the touchscreen. Now, for first test, I slid the spool of ABS filament onto the filament holder, pushed it into the extruder, preheated the hot end and extruded a bit of the filament. Afterwards, I started a couple of different test prints, which all were successful, but the overall quality of the prints was not very overwhelming, as you can see with this bold test print. So to make sure that it was the printer's fault, I swapped the ABS filament with a spool of PLA filament and started a couple more test prints to confirm that the quality of the ABS and PLA prints was pretty much the same. 
The good thing though was that after playing around with the machine a bit more, I discovered the culprits. One slider was not properly attached to the aluminum profile. So I removed the top plates and the affected slider and adjusted its positioning nuts. Afterwards I repeated the boat print, only to find out that the quality did improve, but not to a point that would satisfy me. What stood out to me though while the machine was printing was that due to the fast movement and the additional weight of the motor above the hot end, some printed lines looked a bit wiggly and imprecise. So I went ahead and lowered all the speed values in the slicer settings and printed the boat one last time. The result was once again not perfect, but it certainly showcased that the printer does have potential of creating good prints when the settings are all properly adjusted. And if you want to increase the printing speeds during a print, you can always do so by utilizing the touchscreen. And speaking of slow prints, as a last test I inserted flexible Filaflex filament into the extruder and started a phone case print. Now due to the required slow speeds, the complete print took around 6 hours. But on the other hand, there were no problems like clocking while using this flexible filament. And the result was also not half bad. So after all these prints and tests, do I think the printer is worth the $800? Well, kind of. Coming from a mechanical and electrical side of view, the printer with its well-made aluminum structure, large print volume, awesome close power supply, robust connectors, super handy auto level bat feature and direct extruder definitely make it worth the money. But on the other hand, the given slicer settings from the manufacturer were set too fast and a couple of software settings are simply not explained in the manual. Like for example that you should not increase the extrude speed proportional to the move speeds, since that will certainly ruin your print. So all in all, it is still just a kit that you need to adjust to create decent prints. It is not a product that works perfectly right out of the box. I hope you enjoyed watching this review. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.